The Vancouver Island Society for Adaptive Snow Sports, VISAS, has been introducing people with disabilities to adaptive sports since 1992. A non-profit volunteer-run organization, VISAS is located on Mount Washington, and people from up and down the island participate in this unique program. I skied for 28 years before my injury and decided that after eight years of sitting on the sidelines, it was time to get back into it. So here I am, to ski with my family and my kids, and not have to sit on the sidelines and watch them anymore. So learning to ski at 36 all over again is uh, quite the challenge. We work with all types of disabilities, mental and physical. Our instructors adapt to the special needs of the students. All of our instructors are certified by the Canadian Association for Disabled Skiers, ensuring a safe, fun experience. And what's it mean to you, Dave, as a parent to see Andrew up here having a good time? Uh, it's great because, you know, they struggle so hard. It's nice to see them that they can actually go, come up here and enjoy themselves and forget what they're doing for a little while, right? You know, um, he's having fun, and that's the main thing. The program on Vancouver Island was the brainchild of Herb Bradley, a visionary who wanted to share his passion for mountain sports with disabled people. Jackie was actually one of the first mentally challenged uh, uh, student that Herb took and I think at that time we had four instructors and I don't know how many students but not very many and it's grown from there. Books could be written on Herb and the contribution he did for skiing on Vancouver Island. Uh, I, I first met Herb in 1960 when I was 10 years old and Herb uh, was the, the headed up the ski school at Forbidden and, and uh, he became sort of a, a god to me and my second father and, and over the years uh, uh, I took lessons from him and through the ski school and at the age of 16 I became a ski instructor with Herb. Herb uh, phoned me up one day and said, Peter, I'd, I'd like to come over to Mount Washington and start up a, a program with you. And I, I didn't hesitate, you know, getting Herb with us, uh, you know, again, going back with the history and the relationship that he and I had. Uh, he'd been a good mentor and I thought it'd be great to have him here. And he started the program up and, and ran it for many, many years and, and ran it to a point that it became a model for, for anybody wanting to put an adaptive program together in Canada. Uh, the word uh, uh, nationally and provincially was if, if you want to start a program, come to Mount Washington and talk to Herb. Herb was starting to get on in years and, and he realized that, that he couldn't put the time in on the mountain that, that he had previously. So he decided to sort of retire from the program and uh, I had a concern that, that with, with Herb leaving that maybe it wouldn't continue, but, but with the training and succession that he did and the people that we have involved, the program is just, it's growing, it's getting bigger all the time and the spirit of Herb Bradley continues. Visas would not be possible without the generous support of Mount Washington. They provide half price lift tickets and free rentals for our students who ski or board. A lot of people with disability are on pensions. They don't have a lot of money to throw around. So our society provides our service for free. We're totally backed by the mountain. And it allows people with a disability without a lot of money to learn how to ski. And then hopefully they'll go on from that and be able to go skiing with their family. Rock on! Great. Keegan's 12 years old now. We've, we've found it very difficult over the years to get instructors that can't see past his disability. In the adaptive snow sports, you know, they don't actually put any limit on what they believe Keegan can do. They believe in him, so therefore he believes in himself. It's, it's really great as, as a parent to uh, be able to do something with, with your child. Uh, Keegan and I, last year, we skied about 35 days together over the winter. You know, for someone with a disability that doesn't see themselves as having a disability, it's just made a whole world of difference. Uh, increased his confidence. Uh, it's actually increased his ability to mountain bike because he's not afraid of slopes now, whereas uh, before learning how to ski, he was, he was always quite nervous with regards to that. 
Uh, so, so for me, it's kind of also taught me as a parent not to underestimate what my son can do. Visas also runs a Nordic program on Mount Washington out of the Raven Lodge. There's good access from the lodge to well-groomed trails in Strathcona Park and a team of dedicated Nordic ski instructors. There's a variety of adaptive equipment to introduce the novice skier to the thrill of cross-country skiing. The adaptive program to me means like it means the world to me. It's, it's so so uh, such an amazing thing that I, I can still do that. Is like I remember the first time I came up here and I got involved with it, and I just cried tears of joy because I was so happy that I didn't think I'd be able to do this again. And thanks to visas, I am able to. Oh, Santo's great. Now, uh, San Santo as an adult really appreciates the fact that he can be up here, okay? Uh, Santo did not used to have a disability, so he knows what the true freedom is like. So even just to come up here and have the fresh air and get a whoosh back as with a little bit of speed and the white pristine snow, it's lovely. Everybody should get on skis no matter what level you're at. It's just fun to be up here. Halfway up that road from the bottom, as you come up the, the mountain, depression, cares of the world, just go away. It's happy up here. Hey guys. See you guys. Yeah, see you guys. He's got good vibe today. Welcome to the Herb Bradley Pepsi Cola Challenge for this year. Honoring Herb Bradley, and of course honoring and showing the commitment for all the people involved with the Vancouver Island Society for Adaptive Snow Sport. You guys do a fantastic job, I don't have to tell you that. The Herb Bradley Pepsi Challenge is a fun, dual slalom race and an important fundraiser for visas. Held the second Sunday in February, people in groups of four sign up and are paired with one of our students. It's an easy course to ski or board with the emphasis on fun. People guess how long it will take their team to get down the course. The team that comes the closest to their time receives the coveted Herb Bradley Trophy. When Herb approached me with the concept for this, this sort of unique event, it wasn't a race where the fastest gets down, uh, very much similar to the whole philosophy of adaptive snow sports where everybody gets a chance to win and, and partake. So we came up with a plan where people guess what their times are going to be, closest to the guest time are the people who win. So it's not necessarily the fastest, it's the smartest. And, and that makes for a very fun day because everybody has a chance to win. And it's a team event as opposed to an individual event. Some individuals are singled out for having the closest time. But overall, it's all part of the spirit of everybody working together. Funds raised by the Herb Bradley Pepsi Challenge go towards new adaptive equipment, Visa's Winter Snow Sports Festival and other programs. Yeah, excited to be here, happy to help out. Um, we bring clients up from Victoria and come up and ski for the day, both in Alpine and, and Nordic, and, and they love it. So we're a big fan of DSA, and, and visas are a great help and, and support all kinds of people. It's a marvelous event. It's a marvelous program. It's, uh, I think, the best in the country in doing this. So, uh, we have to support it. You know, there's no question. Visas runs a number of activities throughout the season, along with its regular instructional classes. Visas hosts an annual winter snow sports festival in early January, veterans festival, school groups, and a racing program. A few talented racers from the Mount Washington program have gone on to compete nationally and internationally.
This week we're doing our snow sport festival. We bring in uh, 35 uh, students, all ages, all disabilities, physical and mental, and we teach them how to ski, board, or do cross country skiing. And they have a heck of a good time. And do you know what the sponsorship for this event, Paul? Well, we sponsor this ourselves. We fundraise on our own. We, uh, we run uh, uh, a thing called Hope Bradley uh, Pepsi Challenge where we bring in teams. They give us money to enter their team and we keep the money and put it toward events such as this. Um, nobody in the organization gets any money. We're all volunteers. There's roughly 90 of us. And, and uh, we're all dedicated to giving people with a disability a good time in the snow. And how's uh, Andrew enjoying his week up in the ski festival? He loves it. He's uh, up before me and ready to go and uh, packs his lunch every day So and can't wait to get to the mountain. And how's he making out? Well, he's wiping out less than his dad is, so that's a good thing, I guess. It's my third day with the Outriggers and it's going wonderfully. I am able to keep the weight off my hip and ski and um, I'm loving it back out on the hill. She's not really four tracking right now because uh, she actually is skiing. She has one bad side to her, but the fact of the matter is, four tracking is more for a person that has really a, a, uh, leg injuries and they're out like this and both legs. She's actually skiing. We just had to find that out. We tried three tracking and then we say four tracking, but in truth, she's skiing like the rest of us. And, and so the downriggers, Michelle, they're, the downriggers are helping for your balance. And, and for my balance, and it helps take the weight off take, my bad leg. Takes the weight off of it. And I know when to stop. <laughs> and it looks like you're having uh, fun. You I love you it. Down. All my life I've been very, very active. I was a field hockey player, a squash player. I ran a lot. I ran a marathon. and. Lots of 10Ks and uh, I've skied a lot, skied since I was 15 years old and over time my knee wore out and uh, a couple of years ago I was up at Whistler at the top of Blackcomb and uh, tried to do a turn and my knee just gave out and I knew that was the end of my skiing career on two legs so I thought maybe I could uh, live without it but um, decided that I, you know, I just love being in the mountains so much and wanted to be at the top of a mountain and uh, so I kept looking for an alternative and then I found out about adaptive skiing and thought, wow, this is a great way to go and, and uh, found out about this program and I'm just blown away by it. I mean, I think instructors are fantastic. I think it's uh, so marvelous to have, to have such a range of different people doing marvelous things with, with uh, you know, get, getting the kids out there on the mountain and doing stuff. So for me, this is... This is kind of like a second life. I've had to do a lot to adapt my life. I've taken up kayaking, you know, upper body things, and uh, adapt doing this uh, sit skiing. And I'm just, I'm just thrilled to be able to go for, go, you know, get down the mountain. And uh, it feels so good when you feel that thing going. It's just, uh, it just feels just right. <laughs> I've had students that I've taken up skiing with the program uh, who are just the quietest little kids in school and who have really struggled um, with their different special needs uh, to do their academic program at school. And it has been such a delight to see them in a different environment and see them to become so successful. They um, are really nervous the first morning, but the instructors are fabulous. They're so patient and um, just friendly and, and obviously have so much fun with their job that it really puts the kids at ease right away. And by the end of the day, on the very first day of the, the ski festival that uh, my kids participate in, um, the kids are beaming. They can't wait to come back the next day. And by the end of um, the uh, four days of the snow sport festival, um, the students have just blossomed. They are so confident on, on the hill and, and skiing and snowboarding, but also just um, they've, they've really connected with the, the adults, their instructors, and the other kids who are part of the program. And um, they just are a whole different kid than the ones that I brought up in the beginning. Bye.
The program on Vancouver Island was one of the first programs in Canada. Today, with about 500 students training with visas instructors annually, it is the largest disabled skiing program in the country. The regular program is run seven days a week with five students a day, and demand is growing. With the generous support of Mount Washington and our 90 volunteers, we do all this with a budget under $40,000 annually. Perfect. That was all right, man. That was there awesome. You go, buddy. That was awesome. Wasn't that great? Yeah, that was all good. All on your own. That was pretty good. Almost... He's gone from not being able to sit ski to be on his, basically on his own already in three days. He's a great student. The first time he's by himself was... Uh, it's just magic, but you go, uh, it's all worthwhile, all the training you've done as an instructor to get to the level where you can teach that skiing and to have a student like that that advances so quickly and on his own, it's, uh, the feeling is just amazing. Not all of our students will race in the Olympics. For most, just getting out on the snow is a victory. Help us keep this program going. Sponsor a team in the Herb Bradley Pepsi Challenge. If you are a strong intermediate skier or boarder, look into becoming a visas right. instructor. Go right down there a bit now. Left. This one out more. That's good. Keep going like that, yeah. Now the other one. Uh, Herb knew that he wasn't well and, and he has mementos that go back right to the 1930s and there's medals and plaques and trophies and he asked us if we would take all that material and put it on display um, up in the, the Bradley building that was named after him. So you know Herb is gone but his spirit lingers or, or, or continues with the program. But one other thing, there is a, a, a picture up on the wall um, in, in this sort of collection of, of artifacts. And it was a, um, an old black and white photograph of Jay Lodge. And that was a lodge up high and behind Forbidden. And we had a reunion of, of uh, all the old Fanny Dunker Ski Club members and Mount Beecher Ski Club members up at the old Plateau Lodge. And Herb and his wife Blanche were invited and, and we gave him this, this, this photograph. And I can remember him and I can sk still remember his words of advice. He looked at everybody in, in the audience and he said, all of you had fantastic opportunities. Your parents gave and gave you the opportunity to go into the mountains. And the legacy I ask and what I want to leave behind is to make sure that you people continue that legacy that you got so that in the future, everybody has an opportunity, regardless of ability, to experience what it is like to be in a mountain. Race is ready. Three, two, one, go. Wow, what it means to me is quite a bit. <laughs> they started me off last year on the program with the Learn How to Ski little info session for a week and did that and they've helped me every day since all the way to the point of skiing anywhere on the hill. Always with an instructor, never a problem. And just tell me, what does it mean to be able to get out and do something? Uh, it just means not sitting at home on the couch and doing nothing and wasting away means pretty much everything. I mean, it takes me a day to get out here and ski, a couple of days to recover, and then even just sitting there on the couch thinking about the next time you're coming up is quite a big deal. It's, it's not just a day coming up. Uh, yeah, reliable auto body and alignment center. Uh, we've had uh, one and two teams probably, I think, for about 18 years. Um, every year we have them this year. And uh, we feel it's just a great event to uh, support uh, disabled skiers and uh, it's a good way for the uh, staff to get up and, and have a fun day of skiing. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Rick Spolly. Rick Spolly. Yeah. Along with Basil. Basilina. Basilina today. Basilina today. He, he, he changed for us. I, uh, I've been racing with the uh, Mount Washington race team for about uh, six years now, training for the Paralympics, and these guys show amazing support every year. Way to go. Three, two, one, go. 
It's pretty, pretty damn incredible. Uh, this program, I've, been, I've got incredible coaching. I've been doing it for about 20 years. And I appreciate the support of the people I have skied with up here. I've skied with many of them. And they've got me to a point where if I really have to, in the rare instance where there's more students and coaches, I can go out and manage on my own in the mountain all over the mountain. So as far as I'm concerned, they've done an incredible job with me. Well, it's, well it's, it's really great as, as a parent to uh, be able to do something with, with your child. Uh, so, so for me, it's kind of also taught me as a parent not to underestimate what my son can do. I'd like to be able to just come up and go with my kids and my husband and not have to depend on somebody. Independence is a big thing, and if I can do it without them, then that's what I'm going to do. I feel great. A little sore, but what can you do? <laughs> it feels so good when you feel that thing going. It's just, uh, it just feels just right. <laughs> Man. That was Here awesome, go, buddy. That was awesome. Wasn't that great? Yeah, that was All good. All on your own. <laughs> <laughs>